I have been getting a lot of comments asking to build these animations not just in HTML, CSS and JavaScript but in React as well. So this time when I came across this amazing video based gallery with a cool mouse move pan animation, I decided to rebuild it using React. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this dope landing page experience that uses videos from Vimeo and images from Unsplash. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Just a reminder, you can access the source code through CodeGrid Pro and also receive monthly website templates for a price of a latte. Alright, let's start by creating a fresh React project. I have already created a folder on my desktop named CG Video Gallery. We'll navigate to that folder and create a fresh React app using Vite. Next we will run npm install to install the dependencies. Once that's finished, I'll open the project folder to get started. Let's also run the command npm run dev to start the server on localhost. We'll start by cleaning up the boilerplate code. First, I'll remove the default CSS from index.css and app.css. Next I'll clear out the boilerplate code from the app component as well. Keep in mind that the main goal of this tutorial is to build the logic for a video gallery with a mouse move animation. So we won't get into finer details like creating individual components for everything. Alright, let's get started. First, let's create a file called videos.js inside the src folder. Here I'll paste an array of objects called videos. We'll use this array to store our data. Each item will contain several keys like row id, video id, video name and preview image. Notice that the video id is split into two parts. The first digit represents the row and the second digit is the index of the item. For this demo, we'll render four items in the first and third rows and three items in the middle row. You can grab the video id from any Vimeo video you like and the preview image from Unsplash. By doing this, we avoid the complexity of storing videos and images as assets in our repository which of course makes the process easier and more efficient. We'll import the necessary hooks. We'll bring in use state, use effect and use ref from react. Next, we'll define our app component. Inside this component, we'll create a reference to the gallery element using the use ref hook. We'll also set up a state variable called items using the use state hook to store our video items. Within the use effect hook, we'll define a function called generate items. Inside this function, we'll first create an array of rows. Each row has an ID and a count indicating the number of items it contains. Next, we use the map method to iterate over each row. For each row, we generate an array of items using array.from. This method creates an array with a length equal to the count of the current row. The second argument is a function that gets called for each item in the array, allowing us to generate the item data. Within this function, we create a unique item ID by combining the rows ID and the current index. This helps us identify each item uniquely. Make sure you have also imported the videos array at the top of your file so you can use it inside this use effect. We then use the find method to search the videos array for a video that matches this item ID. Once we find the matching video, we return an object representing the item. This object includes the item ID, the row ID of the current row and the video data. After generating the items for all rows, we call set items to update the state with our newly created items. Finally, we call the generate items function inside the use effect to ensure it runs when the component mounts. This sets up our initial state with the generated items. Let's first create a container. Inside the container, we'll render another div with the class gallery. We'll also attach the gallery reference to this div. Next, we'll map over the items array to generate the rows and their corresponding items. For each row, we'll create a div with a unique key to help React identify each element efficiently and give a class name of row. Within each row, we'll map over the items to generate each individual item. Each item will be wrapped in a div with the class item and a unique key. Inside each item, we'll first create a div with the class preview image. This div will contain an image element displaying the preview image of the video. The src attribute of the image will be the preview image URL from our video data and the alt attribute will be the video name. Next, we'll add a paragraph element with the id video name to display the name of the video.
Finally, we'll create a div with the class video wrapper to contain the video player. But before we move ahead, we first need to install the react player. So let's do that. Once installed, make sure you also import it inside the component. Inside this div, we'll conditionally render the react player component if the video data is available. The react player will be configured to play the video from Vimeo with controls disabled, autoplay enabled, looping enabled and muted. This structure ensures that each item in our gallery displays a preview image the video name and the video player. Now before we write the logic for the mouse move animation, let's get the styling done. First we'll set up some basic global styles. We'll remove the default margins and paddings from all elements and ensure that the box sizing is set to border box. For the container, we'll set its width and height to take up the entire viewport, hide any overflow and position it relative to the viewport. We'll also give it a black background to make our video stand out. The gallery element will be styled to be twice the width and height of the viewport. We'll center it absolutely within the container and apply a transform to keep it centered. We'll also add a smooth transition for the transform property and set it to display as a flex container, arranging its children in a column and spacing them evenly. Each row inside the gallery will take up the full width and display its children in a row, spaced evenly. The image elements will be styled to take up the full width and height of the containers and will ensure they maintain their aspect ratio by using object fit cover. For the second row, we'll space the items a bit differently using justify content set to space around. The item elements will be relatively positioned with fixed dimensions and hidden overflow to ensure that the videos and images fit nicely within their boundaries. The video wrapper will be absolutely positioned to cover the entire item. We'll initially scale it up and hide it. The react player we are using in this project uses the iframe to render the video. So we'll need to grab the video wrapper style element and set opacity of 0 on that element. When the item is hovered, the opacity will change to 1. The video name will have some generic styling and centered within the item. Style with a specific font and initially hidden. On hover, it will fade in smoothly. The preview image will be absolutely positioned to cover the entire item and the image inside will transition its opacity smoothly. On hover, the image will fade out to reveal the video underneath. These styles will ensure that our video gallery is visually appealing and provides a smoother user experience with interactive hover effects. Now it's time to add the logic for the mouse move animation. This will create a dynamic effect where the gallery moves based on the position of the mouse cursor. We'll extend our existing use effect hook. We'll define a new function called handle mouse move. This function will handle the mouse move event and update the position of the gallery container based on the mouse's location. This function will receive the mouse event object and extract the client x and client y properties which represent the current position of the mouse cursor. We'll also get the dimensions of the container element using get bounding client rack function. We then calculate the distance of the mouse cursor from the center of the container. This distance will determine how much the gallery should move. 
will introduce a sensitivity variable to control the movement sensitivity. The higher the value, the less it will move. Using this calculated values, we'll update the transform property of the gallery to move it based on the mouse's position. We'll then add an event listener to the container element to listen for the mouse move event and call the handle mouse move function whenever the mouse moves. We'll also clean up the event listener when the component unmounts. With this logic in place, the gallery will smoothly follow the mouse's movement, creating a dynamic and interactive experience for the user. Hope you found the video helpful, see you in the next one.